Maths A-level is really difficult, and in this video I'll tell you three reasons why it's so hard, but also how you can prepare for it and make the most of the subject if you do decide to take it. Now maths is about the hardest A-level subject you can take, unless you count further maths of course, but it's also one of the most valuable ones, partly because it is so hard. Uh, now if you do well uh, at maths, it's something that universities and employers will really value, and I think even when you're just taking A-level maths before you've uh, taken the exams even, if you're taking it, people will start saying to you things like, oh, you must be so clever, or, you know, I couldn't do that, I was never any good at maths, and things like that. It's really a very widely respected A-level to take. So what is it that actually makes maths this hard, and why is it the most difficult subject at A-level? My name is Kevin Alding, I'm a private tutor and online course creator. I studied maths at Oxford and taught at two of London's top independent schools. More recently, I've been doing my own research in maths whilst continuing to tutor and to develop online courses to prepare students for maths challenges and school maths so do take a look at the links below if you want to know more and please do like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and you want to hear more from me. So here's my first reason I think A-level maths is really hard and let me know in the comments if you agree or if you can think of more reasons. The first reason is that maths builds really directly on what's gone before. So all subjects rely on what's gone before to some extent but none more directly than maths. If doing other subjects is like building a small row of houses, doing maths is like building some giant skyscraper and the foundations for that are the GCSEs and the IGCSEs that you've done before. If you haven't quite grasped quadratic equations or algebraic fractions, or you don't know when to use sine, cos or tan or anything like that, you're gonna find the step up from GCSE to A-level maths really hard. Sure, there might be a few days at the start of A-level where you recap some things from GCSE, and if you open an A-level textbook, you might even think the first couple of chapters look quite familiar. But do be prepared for teachers to start at chapter three of the book, because there's really not very much time to teach A-level math through the course. It's got a very fast pace to it. People often just skip that earlier material and get straight in to the new content at A-level. This way that maths builds on what has gone before is so well known. There's a really famous quote attributed to the idea, often attributed to Isaac Newton, although the quote does go back uh, a lot further. But when he was talking about how he's made his advances in maths, he says, he could only see so far because he was standing on the shoulders of giants. And the most generous way to interpret that quote is to think of Newton saying that he couldn't have done the things that he did unless those giants, those intellectual giants that came before him had done their work. His work sits on top of theirs and that's the only reason that he was able to make the progress that he did. In fact, the truth might not be quite as nice as that because Newton actually wrote those words in a letter to his long-standing rival, uh, Robert Hooke, who had claimed that Newton had stolen some of his ideas in his own work. Now, you also need to know that Hooke was quite a short man. So when Newton says, if I've seen further, it's because I was standing on the shoulders of giants, not only is he coming back and saying, it wasn't your work I stole, it was other intellectual giants, he might just have been implying that he didn't think that Hooke was a giant either intellectually or physically. Either way, what's this got to do with A-level maths? Well, you might not be making those groundbreaking advances that Hooke and Newton made in A-level, but you'll be studying some of the maths that was around at the same sort of time. And the work that you're doing builds on what you've done in the past in the same way that their research built on what they were doing before. If you haven't understood those ideas that have gone before the ones you're about to study, you won't have a chance of learning and understanding and developing your own ideas about the new maths that you're going on to do. The second reason A-level maths is so hard is because it relies on a lot of problem-solving skills that GCSE and IGCSE maths might not have prepared you for. Now, if you've got a nine at GCSE and you've got lots of gold certificates from the math challenges, this one probably doesn't apply to you. But many students, when they get to A-level, find that they have to start thinking and working in a way that's totally different to what they're used to. This is partly about how GCSE is structured and how it's taught. At GCSE, you get a lot of shorter questions. The longest questions might be six or seven marks, perhaps, maybe sometimes longer. But even those longer ones are often divided into subsections where they've got one or two or three marks each. It walks you through what you're doing just a little bit more. Now at A-level you'll have to get used to much longer questions, many more marks in each question, 10, maybe 15 marks in a question uh, at the most, and much, much less structure and support as you're going through those questions. So you have to be able to solve the problems and think through not just how to do the maths, but 
what steps you have to do as you go along. Whilst there are a lot of schools out there that do embed mathematical problem solving and advanced thinking into their teaching at GCSE, it's really not the norm and you can get away with teaching students in a much less rigorous way and they can still do pretty well at GCSE. And in some contexts that might be an appropriate thing to do. If you've got students that you know definitely don't want to do A-level maths and they just want to get a grade at GCSE and move on with their lives, drilling some techniques at the end of uh, the course to do well at the exam can be fine. In fact, this can happen even at very good schools. At one of the schools that I taught at, uh, I'll tell you a story about a colleague who had a bottom set who was coming towards the end of year 11 and about to take their GCSEs. They would have done pretty well, but they could do a lot better with a bit of this last minute drilling and uh, the school itself had a brilliant philosophy of always pushing students to master the understanding of the subject, to delve deeply into it. We always assumed that those students would go on to do A-level, maybe even to do university maths, and that was built into the teaching from uh, a very young age at that school. But with this bottom set, none of them were going to go on to do A-level maths. So my colleague said to them, I will teach you this other way of doing it, just for the last few weeks, just to get you over that hurdle. But you have to make me a promise you have to promise me that you won't take A-level maths. Now that might seem like a strange thing to say to these students who didn't seem like they really wanted to do A-level maths anyway, but what he knew was that in the past having taken this approach, he could get students over the line. He could get them to a really good grade at GCSE and so they would open their results, they would look at their results and they would say, ah, oh, I've got, would have been, you know, an A or an A-star um, at the time perhaps, and they would have looked at that and thought, oh, that's what I need to do A-level maths, so maybe now I can go on and do it. They might have looked at their other subjects and it might have been one of their best subjects. But that promise was made because the way they'd been taught for, for GCSE meant that in those last weeks, they had managed to get a grade that perhaps they didn't deserve. Perhaps that teacher had uh, managed to uh, boost them up a grade um, by these techniques. And they weren't really going to be prepared for A-level maths. We knew that if they were to take A-level, they would be missing some of those key, key foundations and that they weren't really suited to it. So. People often ask me what grades you need to do A-level maths and it's much more than what grades you get. Some students who have a 7 and have really worked hard at it and really have done maths challenges and uh, are enthusiastic about it and want to understand how to do maths really well could be suitable for A-level maths. Some who get a 7 might have been drilled for that exam, might be at a school where most of the students get 8s and 9s uh, instead of 7s and they may actually really struggle at A-level maths, so it's a much more complicated picture than just a number. Now, I'm not saying that teachers should never teach for tests and that they shouldn't teach topics, and I'm certainly not saying that they shouldn't make students do repetitive practice. That can be very useful in many topics uh, in maths. But a good maths curriculum should be one that is enriched, full of problem solving, uh, investigations, challenge style questions. That's why I've spent so much time over the last couple of years making my online courses. There are many free courses there to teach you about maths challenges and to give you practice of maths challenge courses. And there are some upgraded courses if you really want to prepare more. And there's even a specific course that will help you make the transition from GCSE to A-level maths with confidence. So if you want to take a look at those, do check out the description below. Now, the third reason that I think A-level maths is a lot harder than GCSE is that it just requires so much more independent study than you had to do at GCSE. So it's not just that the maths itself is hard, but there is also a lot of it. You'll have to spend a lot more time out of class doing homeworks, the exercises that you're set will be a lot longer, the ideas take a lot more commitment to master, and just the dedication required to see it through to a top grade is just that much more than it was at GCSE. Now, if you enjoy maths and you've got a good background in it at GCSE and have done some challenges and things like that, then you'll find this a breeze. I think you'll enjoy the subject. It is an exciting subject. Maths is the language that all of science and engineering is written in and the logical skills you'll learn will give you the clarity of thought that will build a foundation for you to become a great lawyer or a business person or do many other things as well. But if you struggle with maths and you don't know what you're doing, it can seem like this impenetrable language it's impossible to understand and it can seem like it has uh, no purpose. It can be very easy uh, when you're struggling with maths to become uh, demotivated and to give up. Now, I'm absolutely not trying to put anyone off uh, doing maths at all. It's an incredible subject and 
doing it at A-level is an excellent choice. The point of this video is to let you know what you're signing up for and perhaps to make you think about whether you might need to do some extra studying before you do A-level, whether that's taking another year to do GCSC or just doing some extra challenge questions, just doing a bit of extra preparation to get started perhaps. Because I think this problem can also be compounded by the fact that the GCSE exams happen so early. They can be finished in May or June and then students have a long summer off, a well-deserved one uh, for sure, but a long summer before they start working again in September. And it's amazing how much can slip in those months. Again, not saying don't take a holiday. In fact, you absolutely should. It's really important to take time off after a stressful exam period to recharge and to get ready to start afresh. But if you are in that position where you're not quite confident about where the maths is for you, doing a little bit of maths at some point over the summer perhaps uh, can be incredibly uh, useful once you've taken that break, once you've fully recharged and you're ready to get the head start that you might just need to be successful at A-level. So what have we learned? Maths is hard for sure. Is it the hardest subject? I think that's actually quite a personal decision. For me, I always enjoyed maths. I was quite a natural mathematician. I liked problem solving. I liked the maths challenges. For me, yes, it was a challenging subject, but I enjoyed that challenge. So studying other subjects would have been uh, way harder. I wouldn't have had the enthusiasm to follow through and to work as hard as I did in maths. So if you're in that position, absolutely take A-level maths and further maths. Uh, but if you don't really like the subject and you're doing it for some other reason and you haven't done that well at GCSE, do think very carefully before you choose uh, A-level maths. If you decide to commit to it, if you push yourself through it, I'm sure you'll get a huge amount of benefit. But make sure that you really do want to do it and you're going to put in that work that is required to see you through what is a very challenging subject. Because if you've got a decent grade at GCSE and you're willing to work hard, you certainly uh, can do well. Now, depending exactly what grade you've got and how you've prepared, doing well might mean not getting an A. It might mean getting a B or a C or uh, a grade lower than that even. I mean, you know, I think if you want to get the very top grades, you do need to be very well prepared uh, for A-level because there is this big step up. But there's no reason not to do maths and not to keep working on it. If it's something that you know you need in the future for something that you want to do, if you want to be a scientist, if you want to uh, work in uh, medicine somewhere, if you want to do something that needs that maths, then you've just got to work at it. You've got to keep working at it until you get it. But if you're doing it because it's something someone else has told you that you should do, that you're not that enthusiastic about, and you haven't done that well, maybe it could be a good idea to think about another subject. And as I mentioned before, if you want a taste of A-level to find out if it's right for you and to support you through those first months of A-level, do take a look at my course, Get Ready for A-Level Maths. There's loads of other resources out there as well. There are books uh, that I recommend on my website that could be uh, really helpful for you. And there's tons of content here uh, on YouTube now. So there really is uh, a lot of help you can access if you are struggling with the start of the course. And if you are struggling with maths and you're worried about it, do talk it through with someone, whether that's a family member, a friend, a teacher, or uh, anyone else uh, you, you can trust. I do really hope that you can make it through your studies in maths and you can persevere and do well. But if you don't, uh, it's not the end of the world. Maths isn't for everyone. And always remember that failure in one area can also be the start of a successful uh, move towards another area. Just follow uh, your heart and your head and do what you think is right and I'm sure you will find the right way for you. Thanks for watching this video. My name's Kevin. I studied maths at Oxford and created this Mathsaurus YouTube channel and website whilst teaching at two of London's top independent schools. Over the last few years, I've built it up to contain many online courses, lots of other resources and teaching content to help with maths challenges and school maths for ages 9 to 18. Do take a look at the links below if you're interested, click the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I really hope I'll see you soon.